one. Okay, hey guys, I'm Kelly. Um, I thought I would make a video on painting completely blind because I have heard people say it uh, can't work and um, the videos that have shown blind people painting, people say it's fake. I'm here to say it's not. Um, I am, some would say, visually impaired. I call myself blind. I have no vision in the left eye. The right eye has limited vision. And when I do paint, I use that vision. So I thought it would be nice to show that it can be done without it. So to prove I am not faking, I have a blindfold. I usually would wear sleep shades, but my student has them. I gave my last pair to them because they forgot them during lessons. So here we go. And thank you for watching. I just decided I was gonna paint a very, very simple painting today. So come on over. Um, I usually, what I do when painting is I have jars that have labels on them. I have braille labels on them as well as print that have my different colors. I also put them out ahead of time. I have my jar of water, my canvas, a palette knife to scoop out the paint, um, a paper plate, which is my palette because I'm broke, and I have my paint brushes and a towel here to wipe them up. So I'm going to go ahead <coughs> and wrap the blindfold around my head Make sure it's nice and snug so that way I can't peek. And please ignore how silly I look at this moment because I'm sure I do. Uh. Okay, you got a good view of everything? Yeah. Okay, so I have green and yellow for the first bit. So I'm going to take my little, and just to make sure, if you're not sure, this is green, yes? Yep. Okay. It always helps to have someone around, but if you don't have them, you don't, and that's fine. Um, you don't have to use a Braille label, certainly, but you can. Whatever works for you. If you don't know Braille, you don't know Braille, that's fine. And if you use vision while you paint, there is nothing wrong with that. If you don't, there's nothing wrong with that either. So are you able to see what I'm doing with the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can feel kind of where the paint is, and I scoop some out onto my plate here without knocking the paint onto the carpet. That would be sad. Okay, and then I want to make sure and put lids back on so I don't spill. And, and then I grab my yellow. Oops. And I want to make sure to wipe off my palette knife after I scoop out paint because I don't want to mix my colors in the jars. So I'm going to reach and grab my towel here. And oh, I'm going to grab my brush. And I usually just use brushes by feel. I kind of know what I want to do. So I grab my softer bristle brush because it's easier to blend that way. So once again, I'm going to scoop out some of my yellow light and use my hand, I kind of feel where an empty space is on the palette. <clears throat> Get as much off as you can, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. All right, so now I have my brush. Get it wet, because I'm using acrylics and that's what you do. And starting off with my yellow, I believe. Yellow, yes? Yep. Okay. Starting off with my yellow. And again, you can do this completely independently. I do normally. But I'm just making sure I have the good colors for you guys. And if it doesn't end exactly as I want it, that's fine. So you start at kind of the, the top. It doesn't have to necessarily be. That's a good thing about this painting is it's very... Uh, you don't have to have exact at all. So you kind of make a circle oval-ish shape, hopefully and fill it all in as best you can and using hands is a good thing don't worry about getting messy because you will you can kind of feel where you've painted kind of going in that circle shape hopefully you've got everything and if you don't know if you have you can always go over it again that's okay i don't think i have so i'm going to go over it again and if they blend together, that's great, because that's eventually what we want the green and yellow to do, is blend. So, if I grab green, I grab green. No big deal. Okay, kind of 
kind of going in that circle shape again. And once you've got the yellow, yellowy enough, you're going to go to your green, hopefully. Yeah, it's a little thicker consistency, so I believe I grabbed the green. And start just outside your yellow, and you're going to, um, more pressure puts paint on the canvas, less pressure blends. So you can, I can kind of feel the paint that's already wet in there, so I can blend them together. More pressure, blend into the yellow and back out, all the way around the canvas. Kind of blend them together, grab more green, because the paintbrush feels a little thin. And, oops, would help if I would use my hand. Take my own advice, huh? Ah, and I got it on my easel. Joy. Yeah, I'm not polished like the other pretty YouTube painters, guys. <laughs> this is my first video doing this, so any feedback would be fabulous. So I'm starting at each of the corners and going toward my yellow circle in the middle, kind of blending them together. Nice, soft pressure to blend. I'm going to do my last corner at the bottom here. And after this is all blended together, we're going to let it dry. And then we're going to put in our little tree. Um, I got the background idea from a woman named Jane Font. Um, she's a wonderful YouTube artist. Go check her out. Fabulous ideas. She describes what she's doing. She goes at a nice pace. Um, there are plenty of very good YouTube artists. Um, this background just happens to be the color combo uh, was when I learned from her. She paints a cat. I decided I would do a tree. So there is that. And if you don't know if you've got it all blended, what you can do is start at the bottom of your canvas, very light pressure, very, very light. Just go all the way across, all the way across, up and down, just to make sure you've got everything blended together the way you want it. So I'm going to pause the camera, let this dry, and when we come back, I will show you how to paint a tree. So go ahead and pause.